What's up YouTube? My name is Chad. This is the Wisco Boater Channel and I just wanted to take a uh, few minutes here to explain what happened to uh, the contract that I had on the 84 Chris Craft Catalina Stella Maris that was for sale or still is for sale actually down in uh, Waukegan, Illinois. So the, the original asking price as posted online was 35000 I went and looked at it, really liked the boat. Uh, you saw the video. It's, it's a very, very nice boat, except for that paint couch that, that would have had to, have had to be recovered. But after that visit, I worked with uh, John Simons, fantastic guy with Weber Yachts, uh, who did everything he possibly could to help me get this deal going, well, to help me get this deal through to the end. Unfortunately, it just, just didn't work out, but here's why. After the visit, I talked with him a little bit about what needed to be done to the boat. They knew that they had an overheating issue in the starboard engine last fall when the boat was on its last run. It did overheat and the owner pulled it out, put it on the hard, didn't put it in heated storage as he normally would have done, um, but they winterized everything and then shrink wrapped it for the winter where it sat outside uh, for the winter season 21 or 20 and 21. We came to an agreement on, uh, on the price for the boat at $42,000. And that was basically to cover everything that was necessary to be sure that that boat was in uh, tip top running shape. So the owner was asking 35, uh, I was gonna give 42. Um, so that gave him a, a $7,000 cushion above what he probably would have already made on the boat, which he had owned for about 20, 20 something years. 19, 21, 22, somewhere around in there. I think he probably had plenty of room to uh, to get things fixed. We thought likely within that $7,000 extra over the asking price. So my contingencies were financing, mechanicals in working condition, all mechanicals in working condition, uh, accepted survey, and sea trial. Uh, unfortunately, we never made it to a survey because the the mechanic that works on this boat works well. He didn't, I don't think he worked for Bay, Mar Bay Marine Waukegan. I think he was a, a contractor of some sort, worked on this boat on Wednesdays and, Wednesdays and Saturdays. He was able to determine that the, the right engine did have a larger problem than just a, a water pump, uh, impeller issue, something, something along those lines, uh, being raw water cooled that other than a cracked block or a blown head or something like that. Uh, those are the simple things that could be could be a contributing factor to an overheating engine. Well, he found that uh, one of the one of the cylinders, at least one of the cylinders, had zero compression. And uh, at that point, they reported that to the owner, and the owner decided stop work. I'm done spending money on this. So I had a choice to make at that point to either modify the purchase price or back away. I tried to modify the purchase price and that and modifying it did work. Uh, we agreed on 25,000 as is. And then at that point, I would be responsible for replacing the right engine. So for a few days there, we actually thought that we had um, a pretty good deal, you know, that we we're moving towards because the thought was that we should be able to get a short block replacement or rebuild for Stella Maris in the 10 to 15,000 range. I was expecting more along the lines of maybe 11 or 12 to, uh, to get a quote to replace that engine. And unfortunately, uh, it didn't quite take a day to go by before uh, John reported to me that the owner of the boat had already had Bay Marine quote him a replacement engine for the starboard side. And that came in somewhere between twenty and twenty-five thousand dollars. So, if I were to have purchased the boat at twenty-five thousand, as is, and then had an engine replacement performed uh, for somewhere between the ten and fifteen thousand dollar range, I would have been in it for thirty-five to forty. Would have been okay. And actually, probably would, I would have been a little bit ahead since I had an agreed upon price of forty-two thousand with everything working and an accepted survey. 
So my thought was, okay, I'll go ahead and move forward with this. Uh, $25,000, I'll buy the boat, and then uh, we'll get the engine replaced. However, the caveat there was I had to have a quote on, on replacing the engine. And because of where the boat sits at, at Bay Marine in Waukegan, it's really not economically feasible to move the boat to a different location to have someone else do the work. Transportation costs on a large boat like this weighs almost 22,000 pounds, probably does weigh 22,000 pounds with, with stuff on it. Um, the published weight of the boat is 21,600, but it's easy to put 400 pounds of stuff on it. So we'll say 22,000 pound boat, 40 feet long, 14 feet wide, uh, permits to transport it to someplace, even someplace close, would have, have likely been very, very expensive. We were looking, if I was gonna transport this boat from Waukegan to Sturgeon Bay on a truck rather than run it up Lake Michigan, uh, I was looking at close to $15,000 just to move it from Waukegan to Sturgeon Bay, which would have been around, probably around 240 miles. I would guess somewhere between 240, 260, something like that. <laughs> you know, I just wasn't going to do that, you know, because if I could get the, if I could have gotten the work done at a reasonable rate uh, in Waukegan and then run it up from Waukegan to Sturgeon Bay, I probably would have spent, I don't know, seven, eight hundred dollars on gas plus an overnight someplace. So if call a thousand dollars to, to move it from Waukegan to Sturgeon Bay on the water, I was ready and prepared to do that. So when John, uh, John texted me and said that uh, the quote from Bay Marine was twenty to 25000 uh, it didn't really take me all that long to say, okay, this, this just uh, does not make sense from a, uh, not only from a, just a value standpoint, but just from a, a, a fiscally responsible standpoint. Um, as nice as the boat is, I won't say was, because it is a really nice boat. As nice as that boat is, Buying it for twenty-five thousand, and then potentially putting another twenty-five thousand in it for one engine, just couldn't just couldn't see the value or the responsibility there to have forty-five to fifty thousand dollars in a forty to forty-two thousand dollar boat. So, unfortunately, that uh, that deal did end today. Uh, today is Sunday, the eleventh. That deal ended uh, two weeks ago yesterday. So that was a, that was a real bummer. Um, I, I had already made some plans in my head on where I wanted to stop to run the boat up to Sturgeon Bay, uh, who was going to crew it with me, you know, even started making some plans on how I was going to change some of the stuff on the boat to kind of make it ours. But one thing I've learned as I've, as I've gotten older and I'll be 44 here next month. So, um, not, uh, you know, older than probably a lot of you, younger, a younger buck compared to some of you others that are probably watching. But I used to be a very, very impatient person and impulsive buyer and on pretty much on everything, not just boats. I mean, I would impulse buy and be irresponsible with money when I was younger. And I've learned that, especially when making a purchase on something like this, whether it's a, a, a liverboard boat or some nice car, or a house is to not let yourself emotionally purchase the boat before the deal actually actually looks like it's gonna happen or feels like it's gonna happen. Because if you do that, you start making bad decisions. So uh, I did my absolute best on this. I, I, <laughs> I really, really love that boat. Uh, Stella Maris was, was, is, a, is a super nice boat. And if you're in the market for a boat that needs an engine and you can do the work, in Waukegan, it's still for sale, and they dropped dropped the uh, price to twenty five thousand. It probably can be purchased for less than that. So, you know, it's it's on the uh, the boat websites, Boat Trader, Yacht World, that kind of stuff. It's on Weber Yachts website. Uh, twenty five thousand bucks. It's as is. You know, kind of take your chances, but it had been nicely updated. Just that right engine is is what killed that deal. So. Uh, I have a tremendous amount of respect for John Simons at uh, Weber Yachts. He did a fantastic job uh, working this deal from start to uh, start to finish, even though we didn't get the boat purchased. Uh, so, John, if you watch this, thank you very much for everything that you did. You were 
uh, top notch, first class all the way. And uh, anybody else that has a chance to deal with you, I'm sure they'll feel the same way. So thank you for that. So the video that's gonna come out here um, in the next week, cause this is gonna be an extra video this week. Um, I think I might, eh, it might be. There's a video coming out on how I, how I made a support to, to move the, the cover for the dinghy up so that rain doesn't pool on it. That video has been uh, uh, sitting in my bucket for several weeks now and I keep pushing it out uh, because it's not really a super important video. So I might just post this one this week, uh, that way you get the update. And then the next video that will come out, we'll be uh, looking at uh, four, uh, th three more, three more? Yeah, three more Chris Craft Catalinas. There's four in the area that are for sale. I haven't looked at the fourth one um, just because it's on the south side of Chicago. Seems like a very nice boat, but uh, it's a little bit of a longer trip for me to get down to look at it. Uh, there were two others in Waukegan, both of them very nice boats. Uh, one is an 85 that's had some moderate updates, but very a very nice boat with uh, with about the same amount of time as most of these boats have, a thousand hours or so on the engines. It's an 85 and the other one was an 89, which, you know, newer boats, mm, maybe worth it, maybe, you know, they're all used boats. Every, everything I'm looking at is used. So it's, it, it's kind of a crapshoot. You could look at a 2010, whatever, whatever, and it could have more issues than some of these boats in the 80s that I'm, that I'm looking at. So you just never really know. The 89 had a hard, hard top on it, aftermarket hard top with brand new uh, strato glass on it. Just a, just a beautiful boat. It's all white, very yacht looking. I mean, these boats are big enough to be classified as yachts. The, all the ones that I've looked at have had the blue stripe, which I don't mind, but this one with no color on the side of it, just completely white with a white hard top and a tan canvas. Just looked, oh, looked really nice, very yachty looking. That boat is a soft listing. It's, you won't find it on the internet. Uh, Larson Marine is representing both of these boats. Uh, that boat was listed, not listed. That boat was had an asking price of 55,000 on it. And, uh, you know, it's probably, I'm, because it was lacking some equipment, I'm, I'm thinking that boat probably would sell in the high 40s. Uh, but the hard top, what a, what a, what a great option. Um, what a, I just loved it. I absolutely loved it. It did have, uh, older, um, older electronics. Both of these boats had older electronics on them. The 89 did not have a radar. It did not have any sort of dinghy davit system on the, uh, on the swim platform, but the guy was doing some innovations on the bridge, uh, the helm seating area. It had newer upholstery, had a brand new kitchen in it, a brand new galley in it. It was really nice. That was, that was a very nice boat. But again, soft listing, 55000 I don't really know if it could be purchased or not. The guy was kind of wishy-washy on whether or not he wants to actually sell it. So the, and I give the price information on that because it's not listed. You won't find it. Um, the other one you can find. Uh, it's an 85. If you want to see uh, what, that one, uh, what that one looked like, it's called Ursa Major. And then the third Chris Craft Catalina 3D one that I looked at in the last week and a half uh, is the one that I ended up as of today having, or yeah, yesterday or today, whatever, end up having a uh, verbal agreement on a, uh, on an offer. Should get the paperwork tomorrow signed and I'll get my deposit put on that one. Uh, so I'm going to kind of save the details on that boat until the next video comes out, um, because everything should be in place by then and you'll, you'll see it. It's, it's a great boat. <laughs> Absolutely great boat. It's an 84, just came on the market. It literally wasn't even listed before when I looked at it. The listing hadn't gone live yet, so it might be on Skipper Bud's website at this point, uh, hopefully with a sale pending banner posted on it because uh, I, uh, we do have an accepted offer on that one. So super, super nice boat. The only drawback on this boat is it does not have a gen set, which isn't that big of a deal for the remainder of this season. We're not going to go anywhere. You know, if we run the boat, it's just going to be day trips. I, I highly doubt we'll do any overnights. If we do, it'll be with some friends and they'll be running their generators. Um, might be able to, to grab some power for them, from them. But yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's quite a process, you know, when, especially when you get down to, to narrowing it down to having one particular model of boat that you want uh, to try and purchase. 
there are several to look at and finding the, picking the right one uh, with, the, with the right options, the right condition, the right owners. Uh, by the way, the owners of, uh, of this boat that down in Racine, fantastic people. I met them while we, when I looked at the boat. Just absolutely love what, he's, what they've done with the boat. So look forward to the uh, video next week on uh, looking at these three boats. The last one will be the, the uh, 84 uh, that's in uh, Racine, Wisconsin. And uh, that's the one that I have a purchase agreement on at, uh, at this point. So fingers crossed that that one will go through. I will put a generator in it in the future. It's already wired for it. And uh, it's just be a matter of uh, saving up some money to uh, put a generator in that one. So, so I think that's it. That's the update. That's what happened with Stella Maris. I don't know if by the time this video, by the time this video comes out, I might have a survey scheduled, but we're not going to be anywhere near closed on it. So keep your eyes peeled to the uh, Wisco Boater channel here to, to, uh, see what the next update is and uh hopefully a couple weeks down the road here we'll have uh, a date where we can close on a boat and start start doing some boating for the season finally and uh, i'll put some videos out for sure on the next boat so uh, in case you're wondering what's behind me here that is a uh, lair a lear 2.5 horsepower propane powered outboard motor uh, that my friend kevin graciously um, sent my way uh, didn't, uh, they were having some troubles with it starting and, uh, just, uh, kind of a, kind of a headache engine. I got it running it actually runs great now. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. It's just gonna hang there on the wall until I figure out what's gonna, what's gonna happen with that engine. And that, uh, Starflight 90 Evinrude right there is, uh, off of a boat that I just tore apart to part out. I was going to restore it, but found out there's tidal issue. Surprise, surprise. And, uh, so that, that boat's, uh, on its way to the junkyard as well. But I did get a 90 horsepower Evan Root off of it. Uh, so it's just kind of leaning up in the corner there for now. Might start tearing into that over the winter this year just to have something to do, but just another outboard to have sitting in the back of the back of the garage in case I end up with a boat that needs an outboard motor. So we'll see what happens on that. But uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to uh, post some comments, please do so. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. And uh, if you want to be notified when I post new videos like this one, hit that notification bell. We'll see you next time on the Wisco Boater Channel. Happy boating, everybody.